Do you use up and drain your health savings account each and every year? I don't think you should. Why should you be leaving a balance each and every year? I've got three reasons, that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, so the money that you put in your HSA, do you take it out just as quickly as you put it in? Or are you using your HSA to build up a little bit of a buffer, a little bit of a cushion, okay? What is your HSA strategy? That's the big question, okay? The HSA is unlike any other tax vehicle in the Internal Revenue Code, where the money that you put into your HSA avoids tax when you put it in. It's a tax deduction. Now, there's two ways to get money into your HSA. You, number one, you've got to have a qualifying HSA qualifying high deductible health plan. But once you do, okay, one way and the preferred way is to contribute money directly into your HSA right out of your paycheck. It saves you federal and state taxes, but also saves you FICA. That money then doesn't, that income doesn't show up in your calculation for Social Security, but that's okay. You're avoiding that Social Security tax, okay? The second way to contribute and get money into your HSA is just writing the check or transferring it, not out of your paycheck, but out of your own checking account, out of your savings. And then it becomes a, a, uh, deduction when you file your taxes. It's a deduction from your federal and state tax return. So um, if your state allows that, by the way, California does not. The HSA contributions that you put in, tax uh, advantage. It's a deduction when you put the money in. Any growth on those dollars, be it interest or if you invested the dollars, any growth is tax sheltered, okay? Dividends that it's kicking off or interest or whatever, you don't have to report on your tax return every year. And then when you use the money for a qualifying med medical expense, okay, for an out-of-pocket medical expense, it comes out tax-free. So, so no tax in, tax-free out. There's nothing else like it in the tax code, okay? So what's your strategy? Most people still use their HSA minimally, okay? They take a look and say, how much do I think I'm gonna spend on medical expenses this year? Well, I go to the dentist twice a year. Nah, just kidding, I only go once. Um, you know, maybe I visit the doctor twice, you know, get a strep test, something like that, I don't know. a eh, 1,000 bucks, I'll put a 1,000 bucks in there. And they put that in and then as the expense comes up, they use it and that's it, okay? But they never build up a surplus. I would argue you're gonna want a surplus, okay? And I've got three very important financial reasons why you should have some cushion built up in your HSA. The first reason is for routine medical expenses. Routine medical expenses. When you're running your budget, your three bank account system, you've got expenses that come up every single month, okay? Some of those expenses, if you're the typical American, is gonna, are gonna be health related, okay? Either you've got a lot of kids, and so yeah, someone's got a checkup each month, in most months, okay? I've got three kids, and it's probably not every month, but maybe every other. Someone's just got a routine medical expense or is going to the doctor for something, okay? Or you've got prescriptions that come up every single month, okay? Or a 90-day supply, something like that. And so those routine medical expenses that are gonna happen like clockwork, you're gonna wanna build, you're gonna wanna build those into your budget. Well, if you're building those into your budget, but they, those dollars really should be coming out of your HSA, you're going to want to make sure that you've got enough money in your HSA so that you can handle those routine medical expenses right out of there. For my HSA, I, well, I'll share with you what I'm doing, but when I was using it on an ongoing basis, I'd have my debit, I'd have my debit card and those 90-day uh, expenses, those um, automatic refill prescriptions, they would all just charge that debit card automatically. Wouldn't have to touch the, the checking account at all and mess up with my monthly budget. So the reason why, number one, you should have a surplus in your HSA is so that you've got plenty of dollars to handle those routine medical expenses. The second reason you should build up a balance in your HSA is because of medical emergencies, okay? From thinking of these, the, the three bank account system, which we've done lots of videos on that before. If, you, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, check out one of our other videos on the three bank account system. It's the single financial planning strategy that I've seen create the most amount of change, the biggest impact on people's lives over my 20 year career. Three bank account system, okay? So check that out. But if you look at the need for an emergency fund, well, you really wanna have that emergency fund set aside for only true emergencies. Well, what are true emergencies? 
an income emergency or a health emergency, okay? Um, and so, or a big costly repair, something like that. Typically, it's one of those three things. I suddenly lost my job, the house suddenly got destroyed, or car suddenly got destroyed, or suddenly I've got a huge medical expense, I've got a medical emergency I wasn't planning on. Those are the three primary reasons you're gonna invade your, your emergency fund. Well, if some of that, med that emergency fund for medical expenses is built up in your HSA, that means you don't need to have as much money in your overall emergency fund, okay? Right now we've got prices skyrocketing, so the cost of losing your job, you're, you're likely you're making more income, so the cost of losing your job is technically more expensive. Um, the cost of repairing your house is more expensive or repairing your vehicle is more expensive. So many people are having to take a fresh look at their emergency fund saying, well, geez, it probably needs to go up. And no one likes the idea of putting more money into their emergency fund, especially when it's earning point nothing and inflation is eight and a half, nine percent okay? No one's excited about that. But if you can take a, one of those three primary reasons, health emergency, and say, well, actually, I've been building up this balance in my HSA, and therefore, if there's a health emergency, I'll use those dollars instead, perfect. Perfect, and that may mean you don't need to have even more in your emergency fund. And then the third reason why you should have a balance in your HSA, and I've shifted to this a couple of years ago, it was a big adjustment, but it's been fantastic, is as a retirement additive, as a shoeboxing and investing. You might understand those terms if you've listened to some of our other videos on that, but you may want to build up a balance in your HSA for future retirement benefits. Let me explain what I, what I mean by that. When you are saving up into a health savings account, I already told you that money goes in pre-tax. If you invest those dollars, okay, then they can grow tax-free. Well, you're not gonna wanna invest those dollars if you might be using them in the short term because at any given point, the stock market can see a 10, 15, 20, even bigger drop, and you're not gonna wanna have that happen and then all of a sudden say, oh, I had to go to the dentist, so I guess I lost a bunch of money or I have to sell these investments while they're low. No, you don't wanna do that. So therefore, if you want to invest these dollars, you've gotta figure out, well, how can I create a a safety net so that these money, these dollars are really for the long term. Well, you do that by building up some other savings that you would use when you have medical expenses come up, i.e. you don't use your HSA when you have medical expenses. You pay for those expenses out of pocket. Well, why would you do that if you can draw money out of your HSA tax-free? Well, you save up all those receipts and your HSA, continue. you continue to save into it, you continue to invest, goes up and down, but over time it compounds and then you get to retirement and you've got all these receipts and I'll just, you know, 20 grand of worth of receipts that you've, you've, um, uh, you've accumulated from paying for medical expenses out of pocket instead of reaching for your HSA but that 20 grand in your HSA that you've saved up has grown to 40 grand because you've been able to invest it. You can draw that 20 grand out of your HSA in retirement to reimburse the medical expenses that you had that you paid out of pocket at any time. You've, you've effectively allowed for more compound interest to happen tax-free and you've, um, you've leveraged that benefit of the HSA. This is an adjustment that I've done. It's a big sacrifice because you're still contributing a lot into your HSA to build up that balance, but you've also got to have other dollars aside so that when you do have medical expenses, you can use those dollars in not touch your HSA. So it's a, it's a two-headed strategy. You want to decide to invest your HSA, but then you also need to um, build up some financial resources so that when you have out-of-pocket medical expenses, you don't have to invade your HSA. Does that make sense? That's the third reason why I'd encourage you to have a, to be building a balance in your HSA because it is a huge tax benefit for your retirement. Those are the three reasons why I would encourage you, if you have a qualifying high, de high deductible health plan, that you fund and build up a balance in your HSA. Helps you with your three bank account system, which hopefully you're working with a CFP on that, immediate spending, delayed spending, and emergency fund, and it may help bring some significant tax advantages to your overall retirement plan. How exactly should you use your HSA? Should you do that shoeboxing strategy? Can you afford to contribute the maximum amount, or how much should you put in there? 
all financial planning questions, work with your CFP and answer specifically for your unique situation, answer each of those questions. If you don't have a CFP on your team or you don't have one that's doing comprehensive financial planning, contact one on, on my team. You can find us online, corhorn.com. That's Corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.